Okay, welcome to this video lesson on plate number 40, the foot and ankle. Uh, so this video uh, is going to talk to you about the uh, specific bones of the, the tarsal bones, which are really referred to as our ankle bones, although they actually make up kind of the top of your foot, much like our carpal bones kind of made up the, the little bit of the palm of your hand. Um, and then we'll talk about the metatarsals and the phalange bones. The, this, and this will almost finish um, our list of bones. We'll actually have six bones that we will have not studied yet. Um, we will get to those uh, at some point at a later date to be announced. And we'll talk about that in class. Um, so um, let's start off by, let's, let's, let's do the ones that are really straightforward here, the, the metatarsals and the phalanges, because we really name them the same way we did uh, our hand. So if we look at the foot, and we are looking at a right dorsum, so we're looking from the top of the foot, looking down. So uh, the metatarsals, the metatarsals will be these bones right here. Okay. Um, just like we had the metacarpals, kind of made up the, the, the palm of your hand. These kind of make up the arch of your foot, I guess you could kind of say, the top of your foot, um, kind of where your shoelaces are, I guess you could say. Um, now, numbering things. Where should we start numbering? If you remember, what would be analogous to our thumb? So I'd like you to take your right hand and hold it up to the screen. And then it becomes pretty obvious which should be number one. So number one, digit number one is right here. And then we have digit number two, three, four, and that's a little four, and then a five. So we'd have the first metatarsal of the right foot, the second metatarsal, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, and this, uh, if you think about the big toe, um, the big toe is pretty giant. Um, when you think about it, it's actually maybe the only digit that's actually larger than your thumb. So if you think about that, all your other digits, your other phalange, feet, feet phalange are really short and are, the bones are pretty tiny, but the, the, the big toe is, Kind of unique when you think about it. All right, then we have proximal, medial, and distal phalange bones, or individual phalanx bones. And just like we had before, um, these, okay, so we'd have the first proximal, second, third, fourth, and fifth proximal. Then we have the distal. So we have this one along with, so I'm gonna kind of do this, and that's gonna look probably pretty messy by the time I'm done. So here we go. There are your distal. So these will be the distal phalange. Um, so you know you would say first distal phalange, our phalanx bone, second distal, third, fourth, and fifth. Then we've got the four middle. Remember, big toe, just like your thumb, doesn't have a middle phalange bone because it just has the one uh, hinge joint. And then, so those are those are most of the bones of the foot. Um, exactly like we did the hand, except we do want to call these metatarsals because they're not carpals. So if you remember, metatarsals are closer to the toes. We think tarsals, toes. Well, we'll help you out there. Okay, then we have the tarsal bones. Tarsal bones, again, are kind of analogous to our carpal bones. Um, and we only have seven. And you might say, well, well, Mr. Acker, you said that the, the arm and the leg were very analogous. If we think of the um, the humerus of the arm, that was uh, our femur, and we had our radius and the ulna. Those were like your tibia and fibula. Um, why aren't there eight tarsal bones? Well, let me ask you, did we have a bone in the leg that seemed to be misplaced that we didn't have in the arm? And I'll give you a hint, it was around the knee. And perhaps you're thinking the patella. And in fact, the patella, we don't have a patella in your arm. I guess you could think the patella in the arm would go kind of where your elbow is, where that, that olecranon process sticks out, but we don't have that a similar bone. So what scientists are, believe happened is that at some point during the evolutionary track, one of the tarsal bones migrated northward and actually cover the front of the knee as a protective uh, bone. It really is protective to that soft tissue of the, the knee. All right, so um, enough about that. 
kind of our migrating bone. I think I told some people we might talk about a migrating bone, so that, that patella migrated northward to be in our knee. So let's talk about this tarsal bone. So remember, we're looking down. It'd be hard to kind of three-dimensional. Uh, it's hard to get three dimensions with this picture, but I might even encourage you to go over and get one of Mr. Bones' legs. At this point, I will probably have taken his legs off. You can grab one and uh, take exam. I expect that right one would be a nice one to look at. Uh, but looking down, so this is where the leg would be going down. So the the tibia would be sitting right on top here. So the tibia would be attached here. And the fibula would actually attach in this little notch right here. Because remember over here, oops, this is our lateral side. And this is the medial side. Okay. Um, now, this large bone right here is called the talus. And so it's number... One. If you want to label it talus, you can. I'm just going to do it with the numbers because it's a little hard for me to write using my uh, my mouse. So we've got the talus here. Then the ball of your foot. This is probably the thickest, most dense bone of anything. Every time you take a step, this thing gets the brunt of that weight. And this is called the calcaneus. The calcaneus. Ball of your foot. Uh, then... And then we don't have really nice rows or anything, and I don't think you even necessarily need a fancy saying like we had for the carpal bones. Um, these aren't too bad. They don't. None of them look exactly the same, and we're going to have three that are, well, you'll see. Um, so here we have the navicular bone, the navicular bone. The navicular is going to be between the calcaneus, or excuse me, the talus, and this row of three right here. I'm going to jump over here to this bone really quick, and it's next on our list, and it's next on the list, and it's the cuboid, the cuboid. Uh, maybe a little bit cubical. Again, it almost looks like a trapezoid, but uh, they called this the cuboid. Then we have three cuneiform. It is pronounced, based on what I can find, cuneiform. Cuneiform. Cuneiform is actually a kind of actually a term for written language. Um, cuneiforms are almost like little what letters are. They're kind of a cuneiform or people that when they used um, symbols to represent those were thought to be cuneiforms. Not sure why or that comes from in the foot, um, but we have the first, second, and third cuneiforms, and I'm going to guess you can pick out which one might be the first. It's likely the one attached to your first digit. So here's going to be the first cuneiform. That'd be five. Here's the second cuneiform, and then the third cuneiform attached to your third digit. And that's the foot from the front. So talus, calcaneus, navicular, cuboid is over here, attached to four and five. And this would be analogous to, I think, your hamate. Hamate was attached to four and five. Um, these would be trapezoid, trapezium, or yeah, trapezium, trapezoid, and capitate would be the analogous of these. Um, so first, second, and third cuneiform. Okay, so let's jump to the plantar view of the foot. The plantar view of the foot. Now, I'm not going to review these again. You can go through. I'm going to guess you've got those down. Um, but we have to remember we're looking from the bottom this time. So don't, this isn't coming up out. This is going down into the ground. So let me grab a pen tool here. So this is the ball of your foot. And remember the ball of your foot was this calcaneus, this very large, dense bone. Back here is now the talus. So it's going up into the plate, up into the page. Then in between there, that was our navicular. So here's number three, the navicular. Here's that rather large cuboid. And actually, I can put that right on there, the cuboid. Then we had the three cuneiforms. Let's find number one. Here's number one. So here's the first cuneiform. So that's number five, my fault. That's really bad. I'm not going to erase everything. So number five, number six, the second, and then the third cuneiform. Okay, and that's the foot in under 10 minutes. Amazing. So um, practice away. Uh, I think you will find this will go really quickly. Uh, just take longer to type all the names. Uh, the, the tarsal bones, not necessarily dif as difficult as the carpal bones. Um, they do make a little more sense. You just have to be careful when you get your orientation to front or if you're looking from the bottom or if you're looking from the top to keep that calcaneus and talus straight. All right, thanks for watching.